Welcome back. Today I convinced Matt to make a DIY pushpin wall travel map for me. The ones I had been initially looking at cost around $250, and this one that we made came in roughly around less than $30. Our goal with this project was to buy minimal things and use as much as we had around here for creating this wall map. First off, on our wall that it was going on, we needed to move the thermostat because it was just not in an ideal place to begin with, so this was a job that had needed to be done for a while. After the thermostat was removed, we went out and got to work on creating the board that the wall map was going to go on. This pushpin board we found was being thrown away, so we decided to recycle it and use it for our map board. It's not cork board. I'm not exactly sure what this material is, but you can use push pins in it, so we thought it would be the perfect background for the wall map. The map I ended up finding on Amazon for like 10 bucks, and that sealed the deal on making this project. Now it is laminated, so keep in mind that this map will cause a little bit of glare. It doesn't bother us. I would take a little glare rather than $250, but to each their own. Before getting too far into the project, Matt likes to go over to the whiteboard and draw out his design for what his plans are for how to create whatever it is he's doing. So for today, it's his project for the frame. Matt measured up the pushpin board and then cut it to size so that it would fit the map perfectly. Once he was happy with his cut and fit, we moved on to the gluing part. Now I just had some Mod Podge glue that was left over from another project that we decided to use for this. I'm not saying the Mod Podge was the best choice for this project, but we had it and it worked. I just made sure that whole side where the map was going to be attached at was covered with glue. I didn't leave any spot bare. I tried to get it all covered up. Then Matt and I worked together to set it down evenly because we didn't want to set it and then have to adjust it a little bit. So that worked out quite well, luckily. If you decide to do this, you'll definitely want two people for doing this part of the job. After getting your mat placed on the glue, the next part is going to be removing the air bubbles from underneath it. We wiped them out, but make sure you don't have glue on your hands as you're pressing the map or else you'll end up with glue smeared across the top of the map. The only thing that I wish we would have done different here is after removing the air bubbles is setting something heavy across the map. The map was rolled up so it tried to pull up a little bit in a couple spots. With the glue on the map drying, now it's time to build the frame. The miter saw and a few quick cuts cut the side pieces to length. Now for a little work at the table saw. First I bring all the pieces to a uniform width. After that, I put a recession in the back of each board for a place for the cork board to be recessed into the frame when I'm finished. You see this coming out right here. Then it's back to the miter saw for our 45 degree miter cuts. This pretty much finishes up the outside boards for the frame. After a quick test fit to make sure all the pieces were the right size, I go straight to the router table to start finishing some of these frame boards. Be careful of your fingers in this step. After finishing sanding each piece on the outside, it was time to begin the construction, or I should say the assembly portion of this project. Now you see here I'm using a Craig jig or a pocket hole jig clamped onto each board. I wanted to run one pocket hole screw into each corner, although I glued them also for a really strong connection. 
Now you want to make sure you take your time on this step right here and make sure everything is lined up perfectly before you drive those screws home. The assembly step here will make or break the appearance of this project. Our last work piece is a quarter inch piece of plywood to be used as a backer board. This is going to tie the entire project together at the assembly point. Now it's time to start painting the frame. I had a leftover primer from another project that I was able to use and it was already tinted to a gray color so that was helpful because the frame is going to be black. I did one coat of primer on the frame and then three coats of paint. I didn't have any black paint so I just got one of those sample sizes and eggshell at our local Bernard's of black paint. Once the glue and paint were dry, it was time to start putting this together. After aligning the backer board exactly where it needed to be, we weighted it down with some heavy pieces of steel so that I could attach it. Instead of running staples or nails into the back of this backer board, I chose to use wood screws so that I could easily disassemble this in the future if I ever needed to. Now it's back into the house to see where the studs are at in the wall to hang this. Now it is a little bit heavy so we did want to use screws attached directly to the studs. This helped me place my hangers on the back of the backer board. As you can see I'm attaching right here. Once the hangers were attached to the board the next step was to mark out the studs evenly and level and go ahead and put the screws in so that we can hang this thing up once and for all. After we got it hung, we took a moment to appreciate all the hard work and how it turned out. But now, on to the fun part. I bought some push pin map tacks from Amazon for $6 to put up on our travel map for the places we've been. They come in a multitude of colors in case you want them to mean something. Ours were just put up randomly for the places that we had been to. Personally, I love decor that means something, so this map is perfect to us. We're looking forward to adding more destinations to the map as we go on vacation this summer. We hope you enjoyed today's video, and we'll see you on the next one.